Oh, <laughs> hello there, friends and family. Yep, glad y'all could stop by today. Take a little walk with me. So we're going to do a walk about and a talk about. And some of the things we're going to be talking about, other than gardening, you know, diseases, pests, drought, and everything. But then we're also going to be talking about some changes. And some new videos that are going to be coming up in the near future. Some things I've been working on. They're based on uh, my constant research and my analysis of the situation. Some of which has led me to believe that you know, I need to say something. Yep, yeah, might not be popular. Might piss some people off. But hey, as most of you know, who follow the channel any length of time. Oh, Mr. Tom, don't care. <laughs> I'm all about reality and truth. I'm not about hype, agendas, sensationalism, or any of that. But what we're doing today is we're going to walk through just where we are right here on August 18th, 2020. As the pandemic continues, Civil unrest continues. Life must go on. So, if you would, take a walk with me. So we're over here on the south side, uh, driveway bed as I call it. And uh, we got a few things growing here. And trying to get them to survive the heat. And what we got here is a little sun sugar tomato. And I think since the last uh, video, we put up some stakes here, try to keep it contained, and we do got, yep, some cherry tomato. Yep, this is cherry tomato. It don't have many, and that's just a fact about this heat. Now, when people tell you your tomatoes aren't going to set any tomatoes, once you, uh, you know, get up in the 90s, well, in part there, that's, that's true. But they will set some. Now, I've always told all of y'all that the key to all of this is the nighttime temperatures. If the nighttime temperatures get above 85, your tomatoes are not going to set any fruit whatsoever. But they're setting a few. And the whole point here that I want to make as we uh, look at things is you got to get them through to survive to cooler temperatures. Now my rattlesnake pole beans here on my head too left surviving. As you can see the leaf cutter bees they pretty much decimated these. But in my mind that's okay. Because I haven't seen a honeybee in several years. I depend on my bumblebees, which are actually car carpenter or masonry bees, and I depend on the leaf cutter bees. If it wasn't for them, anything that I need to have pollinated just wouldn't happen. The old uh, squash plant, only got one, it's still hanging in there. And here again, all we're trying to do, well, it's got some male blossoms keep popping up. They open. And then they uh, close back up and they're finished. And I've just been eating them. Haven't seen the first female one. And, you know, this particular squash plant's just trying to survive in this heat. Now, when more favorable temperatures come about, if it's still living, and, you know, I keep it watered, well fed, I'll guarantee you. It'll have some female flowers start putting on fruit. Oh, and you see right here, see that tomato? This is on that uh, volunteer tomato I found. Up by the, oh, what we call old clothesline plant. It has to be old park swapper, which is a hybrid. Well, it's been around forever. And uh, I went ahead plucked it out of the ground because I almost stepped on it 
and I planted it over here. And it sort of took off, but it has been fighting wave after wave after wave of army worms. Yep. You know, earlier in the year, it missed the beet army worms. And I was thinking maybe it missed them all. But no, then the yellow striped army worms came around. And some of them got on. But I came out here every day in the mornings, checking underneath all the leaves, which is what you gotta do. Every leaf. It's rather time consuming. And I was crushing them. But then, oh, about a week back, the fall army worms descended upon us. The army worms are completely destructive. And uh, they jumped on. So here again, even though I was out here picking them, and checking them every morning, then every evening before the sun totally went down, you can see they still did some damage. Oh, got another tomato right there. And I'm just curious to see, yeah, this was, you know, a volunteer from a hybrid. Like say a hybrid that goes all the way back to mm, somewhere in the mid 60s. And that by now it should be stabilized. But we're gonna see. It's all part of the fun of it, right? Then our okra. Which if you look at the last uh, walkabout was looking totally fine. Nothing was eating it. Now guess what? Yep, the army worms found it too. Here again, I've been having to do this, turn over every leaf, every last one, and crush those little suckers. And I thought, you know, in my mind, I think even on the first day of doing that, I got them all. Then I come back out the next morning, and there'd be more. I crushed them thinking, well, I got them all. And I, I really did diligence. But you know what? The eggs are hard to see. When the eggs hatch, a little bitty tiny caterpillars. See some right there? They're extremely hard to see. So, overnight, these, these bad boys can grow. And then they start eating. But, that's what we've been doing. Every morning. We spend, well, you think about it, you're gonna turn over every one of these leaves on the tomato plants, on okra. Oh, trust me, you can eat up some time. Of course, we always do our watering the first thing because I know it's gonna eat up some time And that. And I also said something about this husky cherry over here on the last video. Nothing had found it. Well, in the last few days, the army worms have found it too. And you can see the damage right here. See that? Holes in my little tomato. Not like I got a lot because of the heat. But, and you can see probably, I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up some little caterpillar turds on that support. Yep. Yep, the army worm found it too. So, I've been having to turn every leaf over and pick them off this thing too. So just here, in this little bit, you probably got 30, 45 minutes. Yep, easy. But if you're not willing to do that, might as well just let them go. The army worms will multiply and they'll strip those leaves in a few days. You don't have to worry about it after that. The blueberries, well, they're pretty much at their end. And what's left on there, I've just been eating out here fresh. And that. I put up about all I need. 
I put up over two gallons and that and I'm leaving the rest so we're sharing with the birds they ain't a lot but they are tasty trust me that and there's still you know overall quite a few on here between me and the birds we eat quite a few we got our stand it's now August 18th and we still got blueberries quite a few you can see now some of these I'm not going to eat birds won't eat and they're going to fall off and I'm hoping they'll uh, rot and germinate and sprout more blueberry plants and this will just become like a blueberry thicket not that I really need more blueberries you can never have too much can you? look at that mm -mm 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 -mm. totally delicious Mmm. 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 And this time of year, because of lack of rainfall, whew, their sugar con concentration increases. Those things are tasty. And you can see here some are starting to dry up. That's fine. Hopefully. I got a bare spot there. We'll get some more blueberry plants. And if I get a whole bunch, because I've never let this happen, I can move them around to other places in the property. Or at least that's my thought. So, the pig. Pig's hanging in there in the severe heat. So I don't know what day we haven't been mid to high 90s. Heat index is 115 to 119, 120, 121. Whew, been tough here. But hey, look at this. Still got big. Yep, sure do. Oh, yeah, this one right up in there. Another one right there. Yes, sir. Well, there's another one hiding under that leaf right there. Think about that. Still got pigs. August the 18th. Now, I want to show you something. And a good friend of mine, Les, over there at the Do It Yourself uh, channel with Les and Teresa. I think it's L and T. He asked me on one of his videos because, you know, he had spots on his fig leaves. And then they was turning yellow. Now, what's going to happen to figs, especially in a high humidity, high heat environment, i.e. the southeast, Gulf Coast, uh, southwest, is you're going to get what's known as rust. Yep. Common problem with figs. And that's what you're looking at right here on this leaf. Those brown splotches. And when they get numerous enough, and that leaf is starting to get a little yellow, that leaf will get real pale yellow, it'll die, and it'll fall off. Which at most, you know, you want to panic. I've got it. I've got rust. You can see it right there. At this stage, I'm not panicked. But I am thinking about right now, because there's only... You can't prevent it. Now, I'd like to love to tell y'all you could, but you can't. What you can do is spray with a copper fungicide. Now, you might possibly prevent it, even though I've never tried this because I didn't want to throw the money at it. Is as soon as the leaves start to emerge, start spraying copper fungicide on your fig tree then and repeating. 
every seven to ten days or after rain. Oh, see? More figs. So we still got figs. I've been coming out here every day. There's another one right there. And, uh, you know, I haven't been saving them up for jams or jellies. Oh, another one right there. What I do is I pick off what's ripe. Sometimes it's two, three, four, five, six. And normally, by the time I walk around the property, I've either ate half of them or all of them. Boy, I do enjoy. And this goes all the way back to my childhood. Uh, you know, we enjoyed things in the season. And because we only had them in the season, it's what made them so much more tantalizing. Luscious and delicious. Because we'd eat those things, you know, we didn't have a lot. And then we had all the rest of the year to think about that before they came back to us again and blessed us. Now these rattlesnake pole beans over here, we're just keeping them surviving. Just barely. But, as people say, beans won't produce. In this heat, you, you can see a blossom right there. There's a few more. And yeah, there's a bean right there. Two of them. And I gotta admit, these look a little haggard. But like I've told you in the past, if you can get them through the heat of the summer, oh, they'll recover. They'll take off and they'll produce till fall. Yep, there's another blossom right there. The key is getting them to describe, you know, you gotta make that decision. Are you gonna make that decision to put the effort, water, and resources in to getting it to thrive till more favorable temperatures and climate comes about later in the year. Yep, the old popcorn, it's finally, tassels have dried up. Uh, silks are starting to dry up. And maybe it'll form some type of ears. I mean, it's got ears. And popcorn ears, they don't get nowhere near the size of sweet corn or field corn. Understand that. But made it all season long. And dinosaur cucumbers. Woo, they looking ragged, ain't they? But if you watch the other garden video, walk about and tent, wasn't hardly a blossom round. But they're starting to have more. Yep. Now I gotta get out here tomorrow. I'm gonna come through here and prune all this dead off. Now, originally I said it, they were suffering powdery mildew. See, it's hard to tell when you get mildew. The onset, because it's gray, it covers the leaves. Powdery mildew and downy mildew look the same. But where the difference is, is the aftermath. And that's clearly shown right here. You see all those uh, yellow squares on the leaves? Yep. Well, ain't no doubt about it. This is downy mildew and not powdery mildew. And downy mil mildew has been a major concern throughout the cucumber crop in America this year. You can look that up. And see up in our major cucumber growing areas it's been a real problem it's been a problem here now what I've done to these is I hit them with a peroxide and water spray to kill it which has been successful and I've used that in the past and that's uh, 12 tablespoons per gallon. Before y'all jump on that, test, test, test. 
test a few leaves and make sure. The second thing before you uh, mix it up and run right out there is do not spray it on your plants if that plant will have the sunshine on it any time before it dries. Because if that happens, the leaves will burn. Trust me, it will happen. You can see the new growth come back nice, green, healthy. Woo! So, here again. I could let it all die, do nothing. But I'm a stubborn old man. I decide, let's, let's fight for a while. Now I got three cucumbers left in the fridge. I got more blossoms on here. Some with cucumbers. Some will get more. That's fine by me. And then towards later in the season, you know, I'll let one go till it ripens. And I'll have seed for next year because I'm trying to develop this variety that I started, you know, just by happen chance, came about in 2018. I mean, these things are supposed to be a bush cucumber from Burpee. Well, as you can see, they're far from bush. So, yeah, we got to mow grass again. But we did get some rain. We got about an inch and a half on Friday. No, it was actually Thursday and Friday. And now we're over here at our other uh, beef master. And she's looking a little ragged. But there's one thing I want to say about this plant. It never got this Pretoria leaf spot. It never did, unlike the ones down by the south timber fence planting. Never did. See, that's very important. If I'm going to save seed, now I understand beef master is a hybrid, but I looked it up too. It's a very old hybrid as well. A little odd, over 40 some odd years old. So I'm going to take a chance. And I'm going to let one of these ripen right up and uh, get fully nice and bright and mushy. I'm going to get my seed out. I'm going to ferment them. Now I'm going to grow me some plants next year. You can see a nice one right there. Yep, yep. Nice one. Of course, there was some wasps on there. And something else we've been dealing with, you can see these suckers right here. See them right there? Stink bugs. See them right there? Yep. And you'll know it. Because you smush them. And then uh, smell your hand. Of course, you don't have to smell your hand if you're downwind. See those nice beans? These uh, Kentucky Wonder Rattlesnake Cross beans. They're still pumping them out. And I picked these suckers. Now four times, about to pick them fifth time. And the beef master, even though I haven't been diligent in keeping it tied up, I'm still putting out tomatoes. How is that possible? We've been in the mid to high 90s. Everybody says that's impossible. Here again. Take my advice. It's a nighttime temperature. Not the daytime. Mm -mm. And we're going to get more. Trust me that. So. My beans that crossed last year. They're still showing traits of the rattlesnake. Because rattlesnake are extremely drought resistant. And produce all through the heat of summer. Just like they always have. But then, their pods look more like Kentucky Wonder. 
And as I've said before, I've never chomped down on a fresh bean. And it's no brag, just fact that it's been more juicier than this one. It'll squirt juice in your mouth. And the first time that happened, I was shocked. And you can see, if you look down in there, you can see more blossoms. Yep, see right there? Yep. See right there? See right there? That's a purple one. So, yeah. Hmm, some more beans. Oh, we're going down here to bell peppers because they're down here sort of in hiding. See some right there? There's two starting to come on. Look, look down through there. One right there. Two more in the background. They're still coming on. Now, I've driven around. Is anybody else gardening right now? In my neck of the woods? Hmm, the answer to that would be nope. Pretty much, gardening's done. Burn up, done, finished, over. And even though mine's not picturesque, ooh, that's a nice looking pepper starting to go. Look at that, uh-oh. See that right there? Sun scald. I need to pick it off, salvage what I can. But I got some blossoms. Got another one coming on there. Some more down in there. Yeah, part of it. A nice looking bean right there. So even though I don't got much, what I do put in keeps producing. And I'm just one little old man. And something I did notice on these that happened, didn't happen, is the leaf cutter bees, they much prefer it. Now they got it some, but nothing like they did those ones up in the front. No, sir. We got to get out here, pick off some more dry beans. That way I can have more seed for next year. Yes, sir. Because will I be planting these again? Oh, yeah. Will they come out just like they did this year? Who knows? We can always hope, though. And if they don't, I have pure rattlesnake, pole bean seed to plant, and Kentucky Wonder. Sure do. But for being something that was crossed, totally on accident, by the grace of God, these have done really well this year. I'm impressed. The okra over here, and what now I refer to as jungle garden, because sort of just didn't keep up with as well as I should have, has been coming on strong. Been picking okra every day. That got one right there. See that? There's another one. Let's get them after I get done talking to y'all. I didn't bring nothing out with me. That one there will be ready tomorrow. Yep, got another one over here. Be ready. Got another one I need to get tonight. That's about the perfect size right there. This is that Clemson Spineless. I gotta jump off in the jungle, pick the last bit of those uh, burpy garden beans. And it's not gonna get long before I'm digging my potatoes. You can see right here, the vines are dying. Yep. Some of them already have. So I need to get my fork and get over here and see what we got. And maybe, if I can remember it, I'll have the camera. And I'll just share that with y'all. Not like I'm going to have a lot. Of course, there's some down through the jungle. I'll find them. Of 
And one point, you know, I can't stress enough, this time of year in Deep South, it's all about getting stuff to survive more than anything else. And that's ever so true down here. Our time, you know, time don't like this heat, but it's hanging in there. Of course, Greek oregano it is too. Onions are. Yep. Still got some carrots left. We pull a few. Hmm, every once in a while. And, uh, eat them for dinner. And then we got these tomatoes that we planted. These were, uh, volunteers from, uh, our uh, cheapest worm box ever remember it and we're just yeah i know the volunteers maybe from a hybrid god knows what they'll be what size or how they taste but i have been impressed with the fact that fun they haven't got to wear least spot or any other disease like early blight, late blight. So that's encouraging. And uh, overall, you know, in fact, they're over here in a rather shady spot, which will make them grow rather tall and lanky. They're doing fine. And that uh, Greek oregano that the army ant snuck over here and decided they just loved oregano. And you know, they ate this down the bare ground, except for, oh, well, this sprig and that one. You can see, she's popping back up from the roots. Oh yeah. And my garlic chives here in the pot, they're about to flower. So yeah, I'll be saving some seed from these too. I certainly will. And I'll show you what the flowers look like when they come. You can see my volunteers. They're looking good. Oh, let me show you something. Right here. See? There's the one with the first tomato. Not too shabby. If I do say so myself. Nice looking tomato so far. Plant still looks healthy. We gotta hook up the water to it and give her a drink. Cause even though it rained last Friday, Saturday, and I think some on Sunday, yeah, ground looks a little moist. It is to the touch. But still in this heat, more water, more better. I gotta clip off some of my green onions. So I can throw some of them in my eggs tomorrow morning. Well, Magoo, I was wondering where you were. Okay, where have you been? Where have you been? I came out this morning and you, Spooky and Elrod, were nowhere to be found. I called for you. Where were you? Where were you? Huh? Don't shy away from me. Was you were in the big woods hunting? You was. Come here, you old big buddy. Huh? Where were you at? I yelled and yelled and yelled. Hmm. You know I love you. I love you. You love me, Papa. Well, you're just purring away. Okay. At least once you got home, you knew to come walk with Papa, didn't you? I love you. It's okay. I'm not chewing you out. See, your ear got damaged the other day, didn't it? Yeah, by that big old uh, wild tomcat. And I'll go give you credit. 
you defended the home place. Come on, Magoo. Yeah, we're getting ready to burn out another stump this weekend. Piling up stuff, you know, the remnants of what's left. From the tree service, trimming up our oak trees. Ongoing project. And last thing we're going down here, check on. Here's our peppers and the potato planter which have just went under the shade, so I'm sure they're looking a little weak. Yep, they are. Yeah, they're looking a little droopy. But look at those peppers. Look at that, that's cow hunt. Ooh, my, we gotta come out here and get some of them. Yes, sir. And here again, we've just been trying to get these to stay surviving. That's a little blossom there, some more blossoms. And you can water these twice a day. I water them down to where the soil is wet, good six inches or more. And I don't mean moist, I mean wet. Come back out here about 7 p.m., she slapped dry again. Now, what I've decided to put in this empty one, of course, I need to get some more garden soil. Or Go over dirt pile and get some more of that Alabama red clay and uh, mix it with some of my compost, which is probably what I do. Build this back up, you see. Those of you who follow me, you know I filled this bad boy up all the way up here. And just over this growing season, it's compressed three feet. Now, I ain't walked on it, ain't no tractor drove across it. And that's where, that's something else we're going to talk about towards the end. People and agendas. You know what compacts land the most out of all things? It's not people walking on your ground. It's not your yard and garden tractor. Your utility tractor. Or the big mammoth tractor. No, it's not. The number one. Oh, look at what you get in my hand for? Oh, oh, I'm not playing. I'm talking to the peoples. Why don't you talk to the peoples? I know you miss me, but that's your fault. <laughs> Number one reason is rain. I mean, we've all been out in the driving hard rain. It'll sting you. Think about after 20, 30, 40 minutes, hour, two, three, What's doing to your ground? Oh, it's packing it down, baby. Yep. And I've known that since, oh, the 70s. But I don't have an agenda. Now, the Atkinsons, they sort of fought through the Pretoria Lee spot. And they've got a few tomatoes left on them. Of course, something I've looked at in these. Now the temperatures where they're at, I ain't seen the first blossom. That's not, not a good plus. Now, the beef masters, yeah, you know, they still got some fruit coming on. Starting to ripen up here, and they're small. Granted, just a simple fact, <laughs> they still got tomatoes on them after all they've been through. To me, it's a miracle. There's a nice one right there. So here again, if they can survive to warmer weather or cooler weather, I think we'll continue on. We're going to let them grow however long they will. Oh, Magoo, you found a place in the shade with the nice cool grass. You're just going to chill now, huh? Since I'm not going to carry you. Rub your belly. Scratch your head right now. <laughs> but you know. I was worried about you earlier. But somehow I knew. 
You were smart enough to survive and make your way back, wouldn't you? Now, where's Spooky? Did you bring Spooky back? I know you're jealous of him. You better have. Of course, he's been pretty smart, too. He made it back most days. Some days it took him a day or two. Oh, I can see way out in the distance. You look way out there coming. Here comes Elrod. So I'm thinking the three musketeers were out on the prowl somewhere. Elrod. Kitty. Elrod. You gonna come on over here? Instead of looking like you, some type of lion. Slinking like y'all. Elrod, you better hurry up. I ain't gonna wait on you all day. I'm talking to the peoples. Huh? You gonna come over here with me and my goo? Hmm? Now what, Spooky bringing up the rear? You better not have let Spooky stay out there by himself. That's all I'm saying. If I gotta go out hunting him, there's gonna be hell to pay. Come on, guys. So there you have it. That's the situation here. But we're gonna go up here and sit down a minute because I wanna talk about something with you. Something we're gonna be doing. Something I feel compelled to do. Based on everything I'm seeing and hearing. And I sort of shied away from it. Now, I'm gonna say my piece. Magoo, you gonna come on over here with me? Huh? Now, Magoo, you got fresh water over in the carport that I put there this morning. That cat, he'd rather drink rainwater which I guess can't blame them. And then the water I put out in the carport. Hmm. So y'all that just about, you know, state of things here. You know, we're in survival mode. Just trying to get what little bit we have to survive. So the temperatures start backing off. Of course that ain't happened. And I think they were 96. Heat index. 111, 112, humidity, I think it's 85, 87%. So, you know, it's sort of like when I'm out here past about 9, 10, 10 max, it gets hard for the old man to breathe. And if I press it, I definitely regret it, and I've done that some here over the last few weeks. And uh, that's part of why you haven't seen as many videos, because it just whacks me so hard. I'm down for two, three, maybe four days. We're just, you know, doing everyday things. Become a struggle. And that's because of COPD and emphysema. And that, as most of you know, I suffer from but something I want to start doing, not only... You now my channel is sort of like a potpourri. You have gardening, you have prepping, uh, some homesteading, uh, canning, freezing, seed saving. Uh, and at times, I report what I have found based on research and analyzing of that research of I think are uh, events and issues that I feel are important to not only my life, but the lives of my children, my grandson, and my friends and family. You know, it's similar to my food crisis 2019-2020 videos. I knew there was already going to be shortages before we even had a COVID-19 pandemic, and that's come to pass. Have they been, you know, Extremely severe, not so much. Actually surprising. 
Uh, and this was all based on 2019. Well, I actually started in about 2015. If you're interested, you go back and look through those videos and see. And I leave links to everything. Where I got the data from, what I read and researched. And this is something I'm going to say. And I know already it's going to piss some people off. As all of y'all know, I don't have an agenda. Politically, environmentally, or otherwise. I just don't. See, I believe in personal choice. And I also understand there's far too little Mr. Oak Tom can do about it. And that, all by himself. And plus I know, from being on the plant now 64 years, I've seen where people tilt, squeeze, and use vents. Whether they be environmental, political, uh, plant-wise, crop-wise, whatever for their own personal gain. Now, I've seen that. And I'm sure if y'all out there sit back and think you've seen a lot of that too. Yep. I mean, it's quite apparent with our mainstream media. It don't matter on what side of the table you sit on. There's a manipulation on both sides. I'm just saying. Uh, it's just like the climate debate. Every disaster here in the last few years has been blamed on climate change. But then when I go look, has that ever happened before in the past? And how many times? Oh yeah, sure has. Sometimes even far worse than what that they're claiming this is yep like temperatures you go back and look at the late 20s through the 30s oh there ain't no hotter time in American history or the world no still ain't but see they don't they cut the charts off around 1970 and that no you can still find information even though Google and uh, big tech makes that difficult. And I've shown that to some of y'all. It's just like this year. Let's see. COVID. Yep. COVID's been a big thing. It's disrupted our food supply, our healthcare system, our economic system, ain't no doubt, and our political system worldwide. Yes, it has. And that. Of course, an ons onset of shortages at our grocery stores and that, that was all hyped up. When come to find out, of course, any person that looked into it in depth knew there were two supply chains. And there were us, the consumer, and then commercial, restaurant, food service, and all that. And, uh, that side of it's really huge. And they just couldn't ramp up and change. You gotta understand for restaurants and schools and institutions and all of that, they gotta maintain that in stock. It's in cold warehouses. I mean you go up the land and drive around, there's cold storage facilities, my god. Huge ones all around Atlanta. <clears throat> And that's for consumer, and it's also for restaurants. And it's that way in every major hub city in the U.S. So that was a lot of it. And yeah, we all got to say this, and I know I did, and I know many of y'all did. And that, of course, we got, you know, a lot of people on social media, you know, wanting to say, well, they're using the fact that we all stocked up as the problem. Well, I'll be honest. All of us increasing our buying, which I've looked into, uh, rose by anywhere from 25 to 45% as the pandemic continued on, that, that contributed. Only a sane man knows that that contributed. That was disruption, uh, disruption in supply chains. But then these same mainstream media outlets, YouTube channels, Instagram and all that, they jump on, you know, 
The next thing you see is all about the locusts. Locusts in Africa. Never before happened, has it? Oh, yeah. Oh, never before this bad, Mr. Stone. Oh, yeah. I mean, my God. There's been locust plagues ever since biblical times. It's in the Bible. And that. They've even happened here in America. I think the last most severe one was in 1874 I can't remember somewhere around that time period you can look it up and it was devastating to the Midwest ate everything during the worst of times we were having a depression we were having a dust bowl and see that's another thing and then you got all these people economic collapse this is the worst it's ever been uh, see, the stock market crash during the Great Depression was only part of the problem. And I'm going to say that because the majority, vast majority of America, unlike now, but then, wasn't even invested in the stock market. They didn't have nothing to lose because they didn't have anything to put in there. And you go back and look at what the Dow was and all that during that time. Yeah. But oh no. That was economic collapse. Well, it was far more. It was, yep. Part of it was economics and the economy. Part of it was a thing called Dust Bowl. Yep. Yep, sure was those two had a significant impact on the people in America but you never can see one with, with the other and anybody doing you know it was combined to and that and people who uh, drag this up you know people who sensationalize these events in our lives they already know that 95% of their viewers, whether it's mainstream media, or maybe it's 98, 99, they know because they do surveys. They know they're not going to do the research on their own. It's just like YouTube channels. That's why I've had many viewers contact me. Mr. Tom, when are you going to talk more about COVID and situations and all that? And I've just sort of have an answer back. Because when I did... Now, I'm just going to be frank here and use frank language. I didn't catch shit from everybody, but I caught enough that just made it like, why do I even do this? <coughs> but more and more since I stopped, here of late I see more and more hyping everything up, sensationalizing it, using these different websites and they all feed on each other you know a lot of the websites you know they if you look at them and read them and follow them for any length of time i'm not going to call out ain't it their stock and trade how they make their money is sensationalizing bad events like the locusts the honeybees we're all going to die uh, climate change, global warming. Uh, let me see. Oh, grand solar minimum. You know, A civil unrest, martial law. They just jump on it and they just grind. And we all know people feed on that stuff. See, that's not me. When I look into something, I look at both sides of the story. And then I don't take their word for it. I dig deep. And even though I haven't been reporting, oh, Mr. Old Tom spends an amount of time still digging on several things like our food. And uh, that's why I'm, you don't see me out here getting nobody hired to get a tractor, plow up half my yard as a guard and that's where these videos are going to come in to 
play. I'm going to show you the facts, the data of what is real and what is not. I'm going to leave you links like I always do where you can read through them. Not from websites that make, make their money on such things, but as I always do from as reputable sources as we can find. That's all I can do. And then I'm going to do videos like I used to do on subjects of that nature. Am I going to do a whole lot of them? Well, I don't got time because as you can see from walking around here, you know, I got to try to keep my stuff alive. I got to think about what I'm going to be putting in for the fall. It ain't going to be a lot. And that, you know, stuff like carrots, lettuce, radishes, you know, stuff of that nature. But I've been more and more compelled. As I keep seeing, and some of the people that are doing this, I respect. I follow their channels. A couple I'm friends with. But this is the part. You get sucked into this. Especially people that make money on social media. We all know. I know. They know. It ain't about subscribers, people. It's about views. Once you get past a thousand, get monetized, you can have a thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand, a hundred million. The only thing that gives you is hopefully you get more views. Because it's the views. Whether you're mainstream media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Patreon, it's about the views, baby. Yes, sir. That's what brings in the bucks. So, I'm going to start doing some more of those investigative, deep research, analytical reports. And I already know it's going to piss off some of my friends. It's going to piss off some of the devout followers of some of my friends. But you know what I'm hoping? I'm hoping even some of them will sit there and sit back and go, Well, yeah, you know, you know, you know maybe... I, I am, you know, bolstering this a little bit, you know, uh, making it more than what it is. Yeah. And I ain't going to do this, you know, as all of y'all know. I ain't in this for the buck. Channel ain't monetized. Nope. I don't get a penny off social media. I do it for my kids, my grandchildren my friends, my family, for myself, primarily. And I do it for my conscience. Like I have all my life. I've stood for the truth, integrity, honesty. Those are the things I've wore on my chest. And I could have sold them out many times for more money than you know, and I just wouldn't do it. And I'm not going to do it because I got a YouTube channel. And it was because of all that, I backed away from it. But I just see too much hype now, too much fear. The second wave is coming. What will we do? Well, in all honesty, first wave ain't never left up. I mean, we're on a steady peak. Nationwide, planetwide, statewide. It ain't never went. Up, down, bottomed out, leveled, and now we're coming back for a second. No, it's been. You can go check it yourself. Never has. And some people gave up on the second wave. Some of them are smart enough to say, well, first wave continues. I'd like to think in some small part that because of my B rating some of them. It's not that I'm out to attack social media or mainstream media. When I do one of the videos I'll be doing, it'll be about informing you based on good research, data, and analysis. And I'll always leave the source, unlike many out there. Don't. And even when they do, 
it's warm, it's old, and they still hopping it up. So y'all, hope you don't mind my little rant there towards the end. Uh, I gotta go find Elrod and Magoo. No, there's Elrod. He's gonna lay down by the house where it's cool. I'm sure his buddy Magoo's doing the same, and then I'm sure old Spooky's probably underneath the focus. <laughs> So it ain't gonna be long now, because you can see, the sun's getting low. Oh, she's up about hmm, two in the sky. Starting to get behind my trees here, as you can see by the shade, thank God. So uh, we'll give it a few more hours, then we've got to come out here and start the evening water. Yep. And that's life here at Deep South Bama. But I do want to end with this. I hope all of you out there are safe and well. Not only yourselves, but your families, your loved ones. I hope you're still praying for our essential workers, which are still hard at it. Saving lives every day. You know, our doctors, our nurses, our uh, PAs, you know, our orderlies, what have you ambulance drivers ems you know first responders our police and i'm sorry you gotta be brain dead stupid to want to do without the police and anybody who wants hate me for that go right ahead when all goes bad for you i'll tell you I told you so but then i want you to be praying hopefully for everybody on the planet as well as everybody here in our little community our virtual neighborhood because we have so many people here that have special needs and voice them down in the comments and if you're one of those like i am you're a prayer warrior and you believe in that power of prayer i hope you'll take the time if you can to read down through there pick up on them and add them to your list too because I could use all the help I can with the big man upstairs. So until I see you next time, y'all take care out there and stay safe. Take those precautions because it's still happening. And that, and I do want you to know that God will bless you, your family and your loved ones as you bless others forevermore. We're in it together, folks, because no one man or woman, no one family is an island. Goodbye for now.